Greetings, everybody, and welcome to another edition of the Metal Command Podcast. Tony here with you, and today I'm bringing you an interview with Peter Peavy Wagner from the band Rage. And Peavy's a phenomenal musician, and Rage is easily one of my top 25 bands of all time. For those of you that have followed me and even followed my radio show for a long time, you will know that this band has been a huge part of the show and just constantly cranking out album after album. PB is a talented guy, uh, not from the song, just a songwriting perspective, but the fact that he has always surrounded himself with some pretty amazing musicians and he has kept this band consistently putting out great albums year after year. So with that said, enjoy the interview with PB Wagner from Rage. We talk about the next album they are working on. They have a new EP coming out and they have a lot of really cool reissues coming out. So check it out. Enjoy. Well, number one, welcome to the Metal Command show. Welcome back to it. I guess we could we could say, um, and uh, you know, the uh, definitely uh, really looking forward to your new EP. So, so let's talk about that. Let's talk about the new EP that you have uh, coming out, and talk about what the band currently has going on. Yeah, we uh, we uh, spent the summer playing shitloads of festivals over here. It uh, looks like the pandemic season is over. And um, everything worked fine. Uh, we've been also in some some other U- U- European countries, uh, and uh, everything was good <coughs> so far. We had just have a little flight chaos over here, of course, you know. <laughs> right. <laughs> you know, but I think it's worldwide everywhere. Um, <clears throat> however, it, it looks like you know, we're coming back to the normal. And right at the moment, we're preparing for our upcoming European tour. We are having a co landing tour together with Brainstorm, also from Germany. And it starts right next month, beginning of next month. And right now we're just uh, trying to work out a, a tour set, a tour live set. <laughs> yeah. And yeah, and this EP is coming, right? So, so. <clears throat> yeah, working out a live set. So how hard is that? Because, I mean, how many albums do you have? You at least, what, 26, 27 albums? Yeah, something, yeah. something pretty crazy like that, right? It's around that, yeah, it's around that. <laughs> Plus whatever EPs and stuff, you know, and that's that's a lot of material. It must be around 600, 700 tracks or so. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> and um, yeah, of course, it's not so easy to, to sort out the uh, the right stuff. You know, we're trying to uh, set up uh, around four to five different sets so mm-hmm. we can pick pick every day and uh, use another one or so. You know, so we're not playing at the same stuff every evening. Yeah. That's a plan. <clears throat> yeah, it's it's crazy. So the last album you came out with, I really I really liked it quite a bit. And one of the things I went back, you know, I go back and when I before I interview somebody or before I end up, you know, say you know listening to a new album, I go back and listen to a lot of the the back catalog uh, of of things that you've put out. And it's always interesting that you've always been able to put out a pretty strong record, regardless of the lineup changes and and it's interesting you've gone from one guitarist to two to one again and then you back to two but you've always seemed to put out a strong record uh you know i'd probably say if i had to pick an album i maybe like the least would be reflections of a shadow is probably my least favorite but other than that you've been pretty consistent on all the records and what has kept you this consistent i mean how do you stay inspired to keep <laughs> writing these these songs that you that seem to you know these albums just seem to be good every single time they come out <laughs> that's a good question i don't know i'm just doing it you know i'm just writing these songs and um i got my <clears throat> my style i guess and um it just works out like this you know i know pretty much what i want and Mm-hmm. I always have, of course, really good musicians in my band, people that uh, know how to handle the instruments and how to uh, play what I ask them for, you know. And um, yeah, maybe that's it. I don't, I don't really know, you know. For me, it's, it's, it's normal that it's happening like this. And of course, we have a kind of quality, quality standard that we uh, try not to go under it, you know. Uh, yeah, if, if you tell me it's like this, then I'm... It feels good for me to hear this, you know, because obviously then I'm succeeding with with what I'm trying to do. <laughs> yeah, cool. Yeah, absolutely. <clears throat> you know, what is it when you find musicians, you find different people, you have to always find the right people and you can always find guys that are really talented. But 
you obviously need the right personalities. And and what are some of the things when you look for somebody to bring into the band? What do you sort of look for? What what are some things in people that you know uh, you look for to bring into the band? In the um, the last years now, um, I, one of the most important thing for me is uh, the personal relationship that I have to them. You know, mm -hmm. um, um, in the past, I sometimes also worked with people that when it was after a short while already it was obvious that we won't be close friends. You know, <laughs> say it like this. Uh, people with like difficult personalities, you know, and I don't want to work with people anymore that have two super big egos or so, you know. Right. It's, you can imagine that it's really hard to um, to the, the daily work is really hard with those kind of people, you know. And um, so, especially for this new lineup, it's not really new. Like um, it's already two years, more than two years old now. Mm -hmm. uh, when I, now I work with with Gene Stefan and and um, Andrew Malaki is already uh, already a couple of years longer in the band, uh, <clears throat> but to all of these guys I have a uh, a personal friendship relationship you know and I know them since many years and uh, they all come here from my area so we all have the same mentality you know before I had a lot of people from other European countries. Um, or I had an American guy also one a, long, a while ago in the band, Mike Turana, maybe you remember him. Uh -huh. yeah. Uh, and you can imagine this lineup back then, for example, you know, having an American drummer and a Russian guitar player, you can imagine how difficult this was, because there was really like worlds colliding, you know. Yeah. And it it was every meeting, every every rehearsal, every every day we uh, we were traveling. Uh, it was hard for me to to, um, to bring them together, you know. Because uh, you can imagine that the, the the mentalities are coming from really from the complete opposite, you know. So I don't want to have this anymore. No, now all my guys are from my area. We speak really the same slang. We have the same experiences. Yeah, and this is way easier for me <laughs> to handle. Right. <clears throat> you know, but it's it's funny when you think about. You know, Mike Tarana and, and Victor being in the band, you know, you had a really great streak of albums with those guys. Like for me as a fan, not knowing what you just talked about, I would have never even felt that yeah, with these records. You don't see this. You don't hear this, you know, from uh, from the outside, you know, but uh, it's uh, one thing is in the musicality, you know, as musicians, we uh, we could, could work pretty good together. But um, the personal side next to the stage next to the rehearsals or next to the studio work you know well, it's not so easy sometimes but uh, just two different mm -hmm. worlds you know? <laughs> no absolutely so you know throughout the career of the band you uh, you had you know the early stuff on noise which a lot of people know then you you went to the lingma mortis orchestra stuff you know later on added a lot of that sound to it with like 13 and ghosts and and things like that and then you sort of left that and now you've gone more to, you know, more of a modern version of what you started out doing, you know, essentially, you know, a lot heavier, uh, more, you know, just as melodic as the old stuff, but but a lot heavier, a lot more modern sounding, I guess is probably the best way to put it. And you, I, I noticed, I remember when you were with, you know, back in like the early mid 2000s, you had, you actually separated the Lingua Mortis stuff. Uh, and put out a separate release with that. And have you ever thought about bringing that sound maybe back to the band, or is that something that you've decided to keep separated from uh, from Rage? Yeah, well, if you follow the last releases, there are uh, a couple of songs that have orchestration again. Mm -hmm. What I'm trying today is uh, to combine all these different um, sound elements that the band went through over this nearly 40 years to bring them all together in in one sound you know so um also for this next release we're planning already for 2024 which is will be the 40th anniversary of the band we also have lots of orchestration on the album it's going to be a double album i guess and mm -hmm. uh, maybe we can um, do one very heavy side and one more orchestrated side or so um so I'm trying to combine all these sound elements in the nowadays sound of the band. <clears throat> and also we're playing uh, concerts with an orchestra from time to time. Last time it was 2019, we uh, played a uh, full summer uh, season of uh, festival shows with, an, with orchestra all over Europe. And for 2024, we also plan to 
play some more, you know. So it's just not gone from the band. It's not the the daily thing, but it's it's not gone, you know. Yeah. Well, you know, so I want to talk a little bit uh, about about a little bit of history here. So the band originally came up, you know, on Noise Records, you started off as, as Avenger. It was, you know, the beginning of the band. But, you know, Noise Records back then you, you was a very was a new label. But you guys and you had Running Wild and Halloween and Gravedigger and all those bands. And that was an interesting scene compared to what was going on, you know, around the world and, and stuff. And what was what was that scene like coming up through that? Did you imagine that you were going to be doing this still? you know, 30 some years later. And what was it like coming up with a lot of those kinds of bands and coming up into that, that music scene back then? Uh-huh. Now, when we, when we started with this, you know, we were, we were just basically metal fans, you know, uh, actually when I became interested in this kind of music, it was not even called heavy metal. It, um, it was, I knew the name hard rock <laughs> from the, you know, from the seventies, I was already a big deep purple fan and these kind of bands, you know, from the early seventies that I learned to know from my cousin, my elder cousin, uh, <clears throat> and then around eighty, early eighties or so, the, this this term heavy metal came up. You know, mm-hmm. when, I, when I was already deep into it and uh, collecting all this all the records, and, and I started doing my my first mu- musical steps. I had bands already before. Uh, it was called Avenger, and uh, we were able to do the first album back then, and uh, we were. It was not these times like today when everybody was connected via an internet or so, you know. Back at this time, you rarely knew what was happening in your neighbor's city, you know. <laughs> so uh, we, we were not really aware that there were so many bands coming up, you know, at, this, at the same time. Um, you you got to learn to know one or two of them, you know, when they were um, coming over to your youth club or so around the corner, you know. Like, oh, this is a band that played metal, never heard of them, you know. Yeah, they were uh, also astonished to to see us, and they're also doing this, you know. So it it um, turned out that uh, all over Germany, uh, uh, young guys were starting with metal bands, you know. <laughs> and we were pretty much in, uh, I would say, not the very first generation. I would uh, put the very first generation to bands more to bands like Accept or so, you know. Uh, they were couple of years before us, but uh, at least it's the second generation we were already included uh, with Brave Digger and all this band Warlock or so. <clears throat> and um, yeah, then, then at the same time, all this independent label started to sign this band and we were just, just there at the right time frame and to, to release an album, you know, and then and how it started. I, of course, I could have never imagined at this time that I would still be doing this 40 years later. <laughs> Right. Well, well, it's funny. A lot of those bands are d- are doing it still. I mean, they're still around, and you know, there's a lot of longevity there. You know, I've always had this like dream festival to have like you know, Rage and Gravedigger and Halloween and Running Wild all play like a, a fest, like a one off show together. Or some yeah. of the older noise bands would be actually pretty cool. I mean, would you do something like that? Like if they if these would, bands came together, wanted to do that, I would be with it, of course. Uh, there's, there's talks about this and discussions about this since years, but it's so yeah. far, no, never, no one really never um, managed to bring this all together at the moment. <laughs> yeah, but I got gotcha. you. If you would ask me, if you would ask me, yeah, we're planning this and this, I would definitely say yes to the beginning. Yeah. <clears throat> Well, you know, it's 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 great. You know, something that you did I thought was really awesome uh, when, you know, you guys were with Nuclear Blast was uh, you did the Nuclear Blast All-Stars. You wrote a lot of songs with that and you had to go and write songs for a lot of different singers, which I thought was a really cool. I mean, you have to really think about who you're writing the track for. But I thought you did a phenomenal job, a great job at this. And and talk about maybe going and, and writing that album and and working with a lot of these guys on that record. Cool, thank you. Yeah, we try to make it good, as good as possible. <laughs> Thanks. And, you know, was it difficult to write a lot of those uh, tracks for different guys, or was it just something that just came to you and you were able to do it? No, uh, I wouldn't say difficult. You know, it was, uh, we, we had to listen a bit to uh, to the style and check what do, what are the, the, the mark points of their bands or so, you know. Mm-hmm. And uh, think a little bit about what kind of uh, what is their favorite topic topics or so that they write about. But um, this was a bit of research work. But in the end, you know, we 
we were prof- uh, we are professionals and we know how to do this you know yeah absolutely so with the whole pandemic thing has the touring been a lot more difficult that people been coming out the shows have has this been something that i mean because obviously musicians were pretty much the only people out of work if you think about it and now that you're able to go back and tour are people coming out the shows has it been has it been difficult coming back no, it was like a relief, you know, to get to be, finally be able to get back on stage, you know. Mm-hmm. And the people are so uh, pleased, you know, that uh, it's starting again, you know, they have so much fun. So everybody was just waiting for it. Yeah, I, I think, I think, like I said, of course, I think it's a different problem. A different problem now is that everybody is coming at the same time, so all these tours might be in competition to each other so you know that's another problem but um i don't know if if i would be a fan and i could pick from like five shows a week or so yeah i don't know if i would be able to pay all this especially as we have this recession right now here and every of the prices are just exploding everything you know Mm -hmm. the living costs are so expensive now the energy crisis over here you know Mm -hmm. We we pay like 10 times as much for gas or for power you know for electric power so we don't really know how all this develops, you know, it's getting worse every week. So yeah. Just, just knock on wood, you know? <laughs> yeah. There, there was, you know, it, it was interesting that, uh, there was a, there were a couple bands that actually were supposed to tour Europe and they, they canceled it. I mean, Anthrax did that and I have their hat on, but, I um, it, they, yeah. yeah, they just, they just canceled the tour. They said the costs were too high. Exactly. That's the thing, you know, the costs are just exploding right now. Also for the local promoters, they are just getting cold feet, you know, like, oh, can I pay all this, you know? Mm -hmm. (laughs) And then at at the same time, you have a bit problem with the pre-sales because like, like I said, it's like five, six shows a week. um, And uh, people are waiting to the last minute to get their tickets, you know, because uh, um, everybody's a bit worn from the last two years. that um, tours or shows were canceled uh, a couple of days before, you know, so everybody's a bit like in a waiting position, you know. People are hot for the shows, they want to see it, yeah. but they're a bit afraid of buying the tickets in advance, you know. That's yeah, uh, a general problem for all the show business, you know. It's not only music or metal, it's, it's in every every kind of uh, uh, way in, in show business, you know, or whatever it is, comedy or so, you know, they're all, all having the same problems, you know. Yeah, it's sort of like, you know, if you don't have a lot of advanced tickets, the promoters are thinking, as a show, exactly. am I going to make my money back? Exactly. And then the, the costs are rising immensely, and then the ticket sales are still, like, not so. It's like, you know, they have a nice saying over here, like, 50% is the new sold out. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> that's, yeah. that's what I hear from some some promoters, you know. Or, so. or in some in some cases, they say you know, say the uh, reschedule is the new cancel. Yeah, exactly. That's already since two years. <laughs> yeah, we that, have that's... rescheduled our, our tours now already fourth time. <laughs> but but a lot of bands from the U.S. they they unfortunately uh, you know they they have said that they're not touring over there because it's a lot more difficult and really yeah. expensive. You know, I was talking to a couple bands that came here from Europe and. They said the same thing of just insane and expensive to, and a lot of times because of the shortages on things, they can't even find a tour bus. You know, that's yeah, one of those that's things. That's another thing. It's a logistical thing. You don't have crew. You don't have tour buses. There's uh, everything is the whole logistic is has broken down. You know, from the pandemic years, mm-hmm. and now you don't find people. They don't have people to serve to 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 serve the beers to do the bars or whatever. You know. Nothing is happening. <laughs> Nothing is working. All the restaurants are fucked, you know. Yeah. Um, so this is a general situation, you know, for all the uh, the, um, the the whole what is it? How do you, how do you call this um, entertainment business and um, um, what is restaurants? All this shit, you know, hotels, you know. I don't know what's the, what's the name for this. Well, we business, call it you know? hospitality. I guess is what we would call it. Yeah, here. hospitality. Okay, this was the word I was looking for. <laughs> So the, this whole uh, business is um, pretty much in, in need right now. Yeah. Well, one I have to say, coming out of this whole pandemic thing, you did put out two really good records. I thought your last album was easily one of the best albums you've ever put out. And, you know, you have a new lineup. You know, it's interesting because the, the when you get a new lineup of people, it you know, typically sometimes the first record can be 
a little difficult because you don't know each other. But then the second album, which this last one you came out with, I thought uh, Resurrection Day, I thought this album was was great. It's like you, you really grew together as a band musically. And, and and talk about that album coming together, because I really thought that this record was definitely one of your best ones. Thank you. Um, I see it a bit the same. And the reasons were also the pandemic, because we had shitloads of time. We could work um, way more detailed on the stuff than usually when you're touring in between or so, you know. So this was one of the very rare positive points <laughs> of this situation. Mm -hmm. And also, I know the guys already since way longer than I play with them, you know. And I know what they are, their qualities as musicians. And uh, so, I mean, this this were all um, points that made it very easy for us to uh, work on the tracks, you know. And also, every, every one of them was... Uh, um, Joining in with ideas, you know, even Lucky the drummer first time uh, brought in ideas and we had way more material than we actually needed. That's why, that's why this EP also came out, you know. Because sure. We, we had so much material. We knew before already we won't use it all for an album. So we, uh, we uh, when we had a discussion with our record company, SPV, over here, then they suggested, yeah, we, we can do an EP maybe for the next year or so, you know, so we don't uh, burn all the material now. We can, uh, and so we planned the EP right at the same time with the album, you know, sorted out already a couple of songs that we thought would be better for the EP. And um, it was a luxury situation. <laughs> Yeah, I, I again, I'm really looking forward to your when you talk about a double album, you know, coming out, uh, you know, the EP is obviously, you know, going to be some extra stuff, but a double album is something that sounds really, really awesome. I, I really am thinking, have you begun writing? Yeah, have yeah, you, yeah, we have already more than 20 songs and they're really okay. good. They're good. You know, there's some of them heavy songs we ever did, you know. I, I went at an early stage, you know, with a, with, with a pre-production, you know, but it already you can already hear from the uh, early versions that we have from the songs right now that it's going to be fantastic. I'm very convinced of this new material. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah, and it's always great. Every time you hear a band that is really excited about a new album or they're, you know, they're, they're talking about the new stuff they're coming out and they get excited about it, usually the album turns out well, as opposed to some people might say, you know, they kind of don't seem as excited about their record. And then you listen to it. It's like what we say going through the motions, you know, where you are really it, it just with all these records you put out. It's just it's great to see that you're just still inspired and excited. And and I, I think that's great. <laughs> this is my my uh, it's not my job. It's my my baby. But it's my hobby. You know, I, I lo just love writing songs and uh, um, with my new guys now, oh, new, it's not, they're not new, but with the guys that I work now, um, it's way more, even way more fun because they you see it pretty much the same, you know, especially Gene, he's a, a, a monster in writing riffs, you know, and he's all the time just pushing me, like he's, I mean, he's a young guy, he's 28, and could be my son, you know, and he's like pushing me every day, like, yeah, I have some ideas here, can you, do you have something new, and I just wrote a new chorus, whatever, you know, oh, send it over, send it over, you know, just want to hear it, and he's really hard on this, you know, and um, as we were not able to to play live shows uh, over the last winter, we had nothing better to do than just work in songs, you know, right, <laughs> it was big fun for us, you know, we were on the on the chat every day, or we were trying to meet us, so as as much as as often as possible he lives not far away from me so it's just a 10 minute ride you know and we can just sit together play guitar you know and that makes it of course very easy to come to lots of material you know and work on it you know and make it better you know you know like like it's like the old days like you, like everybody used to get in a room and you just you just write the stuff and you know as opposed to a lot of people bands living apart and they they do everything via skype or they do everything via zoom or whatever yeah. and you guys are getting into a rehearsal room and that, you don't see that as often anymore yeah we have we have the, all these opportunities you know we can go into the rehearsal room we have our own studio now we just uh, uh build up a new studio oh your themes are gone I uh, just hear beep 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 <laughs> i'm here oh you're here okay right um 
So I uh, did you get my the last sentence? I, I did. I did. Um, yeah, we have all yeah. these opportunities. We have our own new studio right now. We just built up a new studio. It's just ready since a week. Uh, just working on the first new song in this. <laughs> Um, before, even before, we all, always had the opportunity to uh, record on our uh, on our computers, you know. And uh, the, all these digital possibilities today, they make it very easy to to work on music, you know. Oh, absolutely! I, yeah. I love the you know I love the fact too that you ended up getting back together with your lineup from the '80s with the Refuge thing. I thought that was a really good record, and you know, getting back with Manny and and you know and and everybody and talk about getting back together with that lineup. I mean, what inspired you to do that? And you know, obviously, you put it under a well, you put it under a you, you basically named it after one of your songs, but yeah, I, yeah. I I, I think that. It, you, you, that, I think it was really cool. And talk about getting that little project together. I mean, it was obvious that we needed a, a new band name because we cannot do just like two rage bands, you know, mm -hmm. like uh, the the nowadays rage band and the vintage rage band. So this would be too confusing for the fans. I guess. <laughs> <laughs> and the whole thing just uh, developed from a, a very simple coincidence, you know. Um, there was no contact between me and Chris for... Um, 20 years or so, mm -hmm. I think. With Manny, I was in, in in a loose contact anyway. You know, we had no problem with each other for this long. And I, I even had a, had, didn't have a problem with Chris or so, but we just, just lost each other out of sight, you know, and there was not really contact. And uh, a, a common friend that we both have um, just gave me his phone number and he said, yeah, we just talked recently. And he said, like, oh, I would like to talk with PV again, you know. I said, yeah, give me his number. I'm just, I just call him, you know. So this coincidence, I just called him, and we were, had a very good phone call, and uh, 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 directly made an, a meeting appointment and met and had a couple of beers and like, yeah, it was all back, you know. Like, yeah, shit, what have we done 20 years ago? It was stupid, you know, but long ago, and yeah, just bury the hatchet and that's it, you know. And uh, then uh, some other. People, we were, we were having this meeting in a, in, a, in a rehearsal house. We have a house here, a very old house, where we used to rehearse back then, you know. And there's still a lot of bands rehearsing there. And they have, uh, an, uh, uh, once a year, they're doing a little uh, local festival there, you know. It's like a little, uh, they put up a stage outside of the house, and then they have a couple of beer boxes, and people come in, you know, it's like, uh, established here in my hometown, you know. Um, these people saw that I was talking with Chris, and they were like, "Hey, you are back you're in friendship or so? You, know, you just talk together to, together again, you know?" Yeah, yeah, everything fine, you know. And then the, the guy just said, um, "Why don't you then play some songs on our little festival, you know, next time?" You know, and it was like three months later or so. And we said, yeah, why not? You know, we just gave a call to Manny and he was also with us from the same moment. Yeah, let's do this. Sounds like a good idea to just play some of the old songs, you know. And it was a real coincidence, you know. <laughs> we did this and it was, uh, of course, everybody was filming it, put it out on YouTube and everywhere, you know. And um, then a lot of uh, promoters all over the world, they saw these YouTube videos that we played together again and they were coming up to us, you know, like, ah, we want to have this too here for our festival. It was Sweden Rock Festival, for example, big festival over here in Europe, you know, um, from Japan, a, a promoter. Yeah, I want to have this, you know. <laughs> so after after a couple of weeks, we had like 10 really serious offers for really good paid shows. And it was like, what the fuck? We're not even a band anymore, you know. What can we do with this? Uh, so I asked my management and they were like, yeah, we have to do something about this. <laughs> then the whole plan started to reactivate this lineup under a different name and uh, play these shows over the year. It was 2015, I think. Yeah. So we played all these shows. We also even did a show in America, in Atlanta. We played the Prog Power. Um, and from this, uh, developed then the, this album. You know, this, we, uh, when we rehearsed, also we would automatically checking new ideas and uh, checking old ideas that we never really finished back then, you know. So all this developed to this, you know. We're still, um, I would say we're not doing too much at the moment, you know, because I'm busy with rage. 
but it's not buried or so. We are still there, you know, and um, there might be a couple more shows next year or so. Yeah. Uh, we have an uh, anniversary of Trapped and Missing Link, and we think we can do some nice uh, shows with this material, you know, like yeah. uh, maybe play the whole Missing Link album or so, you know, this is ideas right now we're discussing. Yeah, those, it, it, when you go back, to that record the refuge album i was it you guys hadn't been together or played together in in quite a few years was it easy when you ended up getting back together was it just like old times like you just went back and you guys were able to just play together as a lineup like you did back then i mean was it did you still have that musical chemistry together exactly from the very first note on it was like we never stopped with it yeah it was astonishing we were like we having tears in our eyes you know when uh when we did this, uh, we we uh, rehearsed in the Rage rehearsal room, and uh, from the very first note, I kind of remember uh, we played "Solitary Man" as the first song. It was yeah. just right there from the from the beginning. That was like we never, like I said, like like we would have never stopped. <laughs> Amazing. Yeah, yeah. In the last two albums you put out with them, with Trapped and, and the Missing Link, I thought were probably the best two records that you did as that lineup. You know, I liked Secrets in a Weird World, too. I thought that was a very, really good record as well. But the last two albums you did with that lineup, I thought were were great. And then obviously this new Refuge album, the newer Refuge album, I guess it came out a while back now. But uh, I thought it, it felt like you just never stopped. You know, it just that's the, that's the feeling I got when I was listening to it. 2018 it came out, yeah. Yeah, it was also uh, the making of this album and uh, how the songs developed, you know, it was very natural, you know, it, it, we had plenty of ideas le left from this time that we just uh, uh, re-animated uh, <laughs> and uh, doing this, a lot of new ideas came, so uh, pretty easy, we had an album together. And uh, you talked about secrets in a weird world, this will come out um, before Christmas or so, I think. And a new version in uh, as a double vinyl, also as a double CD album with uh, lots of uh, um, unreleased bonus material. We have uh, found all these old demos we did back then from this, mm -hmm. and uh, th so this will come out with your original cover. Um, I think it's in December or so this year. Oh, so you are. So are you re now? Here's another thing. I know those albums were reissued, you know, years ago. Have you thought about? reissuing some of the back catalog that might be out of print or might not be yeah we're doing this constantly now since a couple of ye years already since 2015 i have all the rights back from this old stuff mm -hmm. and i i, I uh, started my own label dr bones and we are releasing constantly uh, the old material it's everything out on cd since a while already we made um, a box uh, uh, called the refuge box with all these albums i did together with manny and chris this was the first release I did on my own label <laughs> back then. And now we are um, reissuing everything on vinyl. And uh, that, that's so this uh, first three albums will be out, I think, around Christmas or before Christmas in December. I don't know the exact date now, right now, I can remember. But um, everything is in the pipeline already. <laughs> that is awesome to hear uh, because, you know, I think that the older stuff I, I still think is pretty relevant. And I think that yeah. people, you know, it, it's interesting. Do you find the band's been around a long time? Do you find a lot of younger people attending shows? You know, I, I've seen I go to like see bigger bands like I'll see Metallica and Iron Maiden. I know they're they're uh, pretty big, but you'll see a lot of younger kids now going to shows. And do you see a lot of that now these days. Yeah, there's a lot of uh, young kids coming to the scene in general, you know, and there's also a lot of uh, new young bands that uh, refresh all this, you know, and um, th I think this uh, this young new bands, they pull in people of their age, you know, and when they see these, they're, they're, they're these young bands on the festivals, they also see, of course, the old bands, because everybody, everybody's playing mix up, you know. And then they're also like attracted by the older bands. And we also see this, uh, that there's a refreshment going on <laughs> of the metal scene right now. Right. All over Europe here. Yeah? And when you say it's in, in America, it's the same. And maybe it's a worldwide phenomenon. One thing that has always bothered me is that bands like yourself, a lot of a lot of power metal bands like yourself, never really get recognized over here and in, in the US. And, you know, yeah. why do you think that is? Because I've been thinking about this for, for years, wondering why a lot of these bands 
will play big big shows, you know, over in Europe, but over here. I'll give you an example. Like Halloween will play huge shows in Europe and then come over here and it's like a small club show. I mean, it's like almost it, it almost feels like people still really don't know about them and they've been around for for almost 40 years. That, uh, you know, cracking up the U.S. market for a European band is very, very hard and it's very expensive also. Mm -hmm. And you need uh, the right business partners, I guess, for this, you know, because you cannot do this just alone, you know. You need, it's not only the record company, you need uh, the right agency over there, you know. It's a question of contacts, I guess, you know. Um, my management is working now since uh, over a year now. They have... Uh, connections to um they have first of all they have fused, uh, fused with a bigger agency over here in munich in germany mm -hmm. which which is connected to a lot of american agencies because they are doing bigger bands like megadeth and stuff you know mm -hmm. and uh, so this connection now we try to make this work for us also you know uh right at the moment in these days uh uh, this week, my uh, my manager is over there and uh, wiping up the, <laughs> uh, having shit loads of meetings with uh, with agency people over there, you know, to nail something, you know. Uh, we all, they already been there twice or so in the months before, met with lots of uh, important people, you know. <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of a lot of stuff in the discussion, you know, like we could be uh, supporting. Um, a bit bigger bands or so, um, like get a foot into the market, you know. But you know, b b between the discussions and the, and the final results, there's always a big gap, you know. So <laughs> at the moment, we're just hoping to uh, that something works out from all the stuff that we're trying, you know. And yeah. We just we just realize it's it's not easy to get a foot in this market, you know. I think that's unfortunate, <clears throat> but you know it, it's been nice. At least you've been able to come over and play Prog Power, you know, a couple times, mm -hmm. uh, and and I really think that you know I, it really it also makes me a little bit sad that a lot of bands like yourself don't really get recognized over here as you should be, you know, because it's because you've always put out pretty high pretty qual pretty high quality records. I mean, there really isn't like I said, it's really hard to go back and say, man, is there a Rage album that really yeah. isn't very good and it's hard to say that i mean I, I had to like think about it you know yesterday when i was thinking about that and i'm like is it really a bad album by this band and like i said there was maybe one album i probably had to say i like the least and and that's it you know i mean it's there really isn't a bad record you always seem to put out consistently good stuff which i i think yeah. is is rare these days that's that's what all these agency people say you know when they uh, um check outrage then for um getting into it you know like yeah, well this is a really good band there are a lot of pot potential uh, that could could be a lot of interest uh, in the states if we would get the the name just uh, placed you know yeah um, so definitely it would it uh, it needs a, um, a good support to us as a, just to start you know and yeah. directly uh, single shows coming up this you know after this you know so it's a, you need a business plan actually <laughs> and um yeah we're, we're working on it we're trying to achieve something and that's all i can say you know yeah and how if we would succeed uh, if, we, if we would find a potential partner over there that's written in the stars <laughs> well he talked a little bit about some younger bands um out there you know coming into the scene who are some, are there been any bands that really have impressed you at all that you've seen and or maybe have met and you know you know anybody that, that comes in you play shows with or festivals uh, anybody that comes to mind yeah but don't ask me for the names we just played uh two weeks ago a festival it was a band before us really young people but I forgot the fucking name. <laughs> I'm really, <laughs> really not good with names. <laughs> I just, when I hear those bands, I, 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 I throw an eye on it and it's like, wow, this is really good. You're playing good. They're looking good. You know, they're having good ideas, you know. <laughs> so I can imagine that these bands might have a bright future. But if it comes to names right now, you know, I'm not prepared for this. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's, it's okay. I, that's like scratch, man, fuck, I'm, I'm an old idiot, you know. 
what the fuck? I forgot all these names, you know. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, sometimes we get a little we get a little bit older and you start f forgetting stuff. <laughs> you know, it, it happens. It was, I mean, it was, I'm, I was never good in names, you know, so people's names. So I remember all the faces, people that I met, you know, but I never remember their names. <laughs> yeah, that, that's it. <laughs> It would be kind of funny if he did tour the U.S. You know, you probably would get people coming up to you like, "Man, how long have you guys ever been around?" I'm like, I "Never heard of you before." And then you're like, "Well, I have 30 albums out," <laughs> you know, <laughs> and they're like, "What?" You know, that's yeah. just something that that happens to people. You'd be surprised about some bands that come over here that maybe have never toured here, but they have quite a few records out, and then all of a sudden, you go. You talk to them. Oh, yeah, you, you should check out the other 28 albums I have coming out, you know, that have been out. And they look yeah, like, yeah. really? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> That's right. Well, I got to tell you what, PB, it was great to be able to talk to you. I have I have been uh, a fan of yours for, for, you know, 25 years now. And, you know, I can tell you that the... I am just still blown away by the fact you still put out great records and you stayed inspired. And, and to me... I think that's that's a great thing. I, I think it's great that you're still putting these records out, and you know, hopefully, maybe you'll come. You know, maybe you'll tour here. Maybe you know, I go to Prague Power if you play that festival again, and and get to see you play. But you know, I have to tell you before I end off the interview that uh, I really do admire a lot of the work that you've done over the years. In, in, in all honesty, um, thank you, you know, for I, that, Tony. Thank you for that. <laughs> I, I I could see thirty Rage CDs sitting on my on my shelf over there if I count Refuge and the lingua yeah. mortar stuff and the eps and you know all that all that fun stuff yeah. um you know you took really quick before I, there's one thing i did forget to ask uh, as far as you got the noise record stuff some of the stuff that came out on gun records is that something you thought about putting out as well yeah we have uh, actually for for the 40th anniversary in two years we want to put up the whole back catalog we have um um uh, license the stuff from uh, the, the gun stuff now is owned by Sony. I just made a new deal with them. Okay. We have, li we have licensed the stuff for for um, uh, for CD and also vinyl versions. Where some of them we already released, um, and also the set, also the stuff that was out on Nuclear Blast. Uh, we are just working on a license deal for that. So the plan is, uh, if all works well, uh, we can bring out a uh, a big box with a complete back catalog of of Rage in 2024. Yeah. And about touring America, I just got one um, one thing to say. You know, um, as as soon as you might be aware, for us uh, in, a, in the past it was an important market: Russia, Ukraine, you know, all these eastern countries here over here in Europe. And this uh, market completely broke away, and uh, I'm pretty sure we will never tour there again. <laughs> yeah. How could we? Um, uh, so we need to uh, find new markets for the band, you know. To We are a professional touring band. We need to have markets to tour, you know. So this is a very urgent reason for us to get a foot into the American market. That's why we're really working hard on this. And... You know how this is, the longer you work on something, the more effort you put into something, then some results will come sooner or, la sooner or later. Yeah. So I'm, I'm pretty optimistic that we're going to find some partners over there and find some possibilities to give it a good try, you know, to come yeah. over and actually play for the people all over the country. That is the plan, and we will not stop working before we then manage to do something. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I was just thinking of something. The Sound Chaser album, you did you did a song with Andy Darris. Uh, you know, he sang right, some guest right, vocals. Right. And uh, he's actually a good friend of mine. And I'm curious how that ended up coming, how did it end up coming about? How do you ended up getting him to sing on the album? I, I know you might have, I think Charlie was doing, was he producing the album, Charlie? Bauer, yeah, he or? was producing the yeah. album. But, okay. but guess what? Andy is also a friend of mine. So, okay. Of course, it was uh, obvious, you know. We, 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 uh, the thing was, we recorded in Andy's studio in Tenerife. And uh, of course, he was there, and it was all, it was so natural that he just w w would join in, and sing the stuff with me, you know. Um, so, just a natural thing, you know. Awesome. Well, any last words for the fans that are going to be checking out this, uh, checking out the interview and and the EP? Anything you want to say, you know, to end off the interview? Yeah. Thanks to everybody who's already discovered the band and for those who didn't who don't who don't know us yet just check it out you will be surprised in a positive way i guess if you like power metal 
And yeah, like I said already in the, uh, before, we are trying definitely to get over there and we won't stop until we found a solution. <laughs> so um, sooner or later, you have to see us <laughs> if you want or not. <laughs>